I want to tell you something. Guy Tory was in one of the a uh, very very legendary movie, tripping? American History oh, X. Oh, like tripping. You were in American <laughs> History X with Ed Norton. Fuck yeah, what you man. heard. <laughs> American History X. If we can find Guy Tory and Ed Norton in the in the laundry room. Be my old teeth too. That's before I got my dental work done. <laughs> <laughs> he was in uh, that movie was very controversial. Yeah. It, it was, was. A, it was about you know racism and and, and Nazis and all this. There's other a lot shit. of stories behind that movie, man. So many stories that circulated. That's Tony that Day, no? Tony K. Tony who was K. Directed sorry. His first film. He was a, a, a video and a oh, commercial director, film. and he oh. was Jewish from Australia. Wow. Okay. And there was a lot of fucking. I got that movie, man. I didn't. I didn't audition for that movie. Really? How'd they you get saw the movie? me at Fat Tuesdays, the comedy that I created. He wow. created Fat and Tuesdays. And they came down to see another comedian for that role. I went up and was talking about how stupid racism is, no matter what your ethnicity, and they thought I was better for the role. Plus, I was cheaper than the other comedian because he's a big name. Right. But so they gave me the role. And it was wow. very early in my career, man. And that was well, go ahead. Tommy, right? Tommy Davidson. Tommy Davidson, yeah. They yeah. came to see Tommy Davidson. And, and, How'd uh, you fucking know that? He, no, he knows a lot of shit. He's <laughs> Asian. He gets to not that too, but he's nosy as fuck. <laughs> how'd you how'd you know? Well, I just like researching people. I don't know. Well, yo, student, he researches. Wow. He, okay, yeah. so Tommy Davidson yeah. was supposed to get it. Yeah, he's supposed to get that role because the the producers had done I think Booty Call with him. Okay, you right. Know, the, I mean, the movie Booty Call with him. I want to you know, right, right. false rumors booty out call, there. Right. <laughs> the movie Booty Call with him. And then I went up, and it was funny because I was at the Asthma Comedy Festival, right? Okay. Had a great manager at the time, and he was like, man, you're going to be so great at Asthma Comedy Festival. For the people who don't go, let's do a special Fat Tuesdays with just you and Tommy Davidson. We'll use Tommy as a draw, and, and we invited like 250 industry people down. Now, yeah. we didn't know they were going to be in the room, yeah. but they came down to see Tommy, and then I went up and... You know, bam! It nice. was, the rest was history. Wow, X. <laughs> yeah, history. That that. How was Ed Norton work? Because Ed Norton's one of the one of the greatest Ed's, actors. Ed, Ed Norton's a great actor. Is, is he method? Was he? I heard he was method. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait, wait, yeah. Wait, the wait. way you said that. The the way he said that. Yeah. Wait, yo. So what was? It, so how was he? Man, was, he's a wonderful actor. <laughs> oh man, that said it all. Ah, uh, so Ed uh, Norton, as like you guys, I learned so much from him as an actor. As a- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I did learn a lot, man. He taught me a lot without yeah. teaching me, but just like watching him work, he's phenomenal at at at, at the lens. Because I didn't know at that time I was doing sitcoms and shit. Yeah, and sitcoms are different from film. You know, sitcoms you can be big and loud, right, right, right. but but film was very subtle, very subtle, and especially a movie like that, as important as it was. And the director let me go. He gave me the green light. I could ad lib, which is great for a comic. Right, mm, and you know, back then I was a comic. I wasn't a comedian yet, so I was still a comic. So you know, and and just watching him, man, was just like wow. And as an actor, watching him was great as an actor. But you didn't hang out with him. He was great actor. <laughs> sometimes you know you, you look at you know when you work with certain people I think he's misunderstood and I said this on another interview too man okay. he, 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 he's such a, a great actor that he cares about the entire film mm. and he wants every part to be you right. know great but he, it, the execution may be wrong because actors should never direct other actors unless you're acting and directing and and there's some times when he was trying to direct and like the director was like motherfucker I'm the director right, right, so right. so there's times where oh, it's like I've there's a chain that. of command and yeah. it's like no you like I've been on films where I saw an extra do something bad in the background and doing period of doing a period piece and they yeah. either doing something that wasn't period a handshake or a walk that wasn't yeah. period and I wouldn't go to the even the extra and say something I go to the director and say hey look at, look at the guy look at the monitor look at that guy right there he's not walking seventies he's walking right. like it's you know two thousand five you're in the eighteen so hundreds like yeah, yeah it was good baby. yeah but in life when we shot life. <laughs> Right. You know, the movie Life. Yeah, which he took- also in Life with Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence. And Bernie and Mac. Bernie Rest Mac, one of the funniest movies. Oh, my God. So Go in ahead. Life, man, it was a period piece in the, in the 40s. So yes. when we're doing the baseball scenes, there were some guys who were doing high five and shit. I played an extra. There was no high five. No high five. He wasn't extra in life. That's right. You play, there I was got, no high five in the 40s. Who were you? Who were you? The field? <laughs> Back then, he was. Oh, no, 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 shit. Back then, he was the mound. Bernie Mac. Pitching for him. Jack a leg. Jack a leg. Jack a leg. Jack a leg. But there were some extras doing high fiving and stuff. And I told the director, I said, look, they weren't high fiving in the 40s. Right, they sure were. It was like doing the whole. It was like a, a, a different type of hand clap. Yeah, slide. Yeah, slide. Really? Yeah, slide. slide. Yeah. yeah. So like, so you got to be period. So I didn't go to the extras and say that. I went to the director, and director told the extras or the AD, the so assistant director. So you give the, the power to the director. Exactly, because it's, it's not my director. job. My job is to act. But I think, but but do you think 
there's a point where you've worked with you've worked with Ed Norton. You work with Bernie. You work with uh, Martin, Eddie. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I cool. can drop names I want to all day. No, I, no, no. I, I want been fortunate you to, enough. I want to, you to drop. But I've been names. fortunate to, to work with such amazing actors where I stole from them. Where I, where I watched them who work. Did you, who did you take from? Who Halle you Berry. Take? Halle Berry. I did. A, I had. I had. I, had, I won't say small roles. It was small roles, but I had. A, I had a role in introducing Dorothy Dandridge. Wow. And there's a scene in there where my name was Man in Blue Shirt. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> had one line. Man. But what I learned from Halle that day was. She had, you know, they're doing her close-ups, right? Right. And then you have the actor behind the camera doing his thing, right? Yeah. So then it was time for the other actor's close-up. Yeah. And they were like, Hallie, you can go to your trailer. We're going to do, you know, uh, all, the, all the porters. Uh, what, what, like, forget the day now. Uh, he's going to do his, his uh, close-up. And she's like, no, I want to be here. I want to be here and give him the same energy the same that he gave me. me. Nice. And I learned from that because she, a lot of actors will just go to the trailer. Yeah, and now you got some serious... You know, scenes where you're playing to somebody just reading the lines and not really giving the emotion, right. and it's your close up, and that and that affects you as an actor. It does. You know, so I learned that from her. So then, flip two years later, I did a movie called Runaway Jury, mm. right? And and about with uh, John Cusack and yeah. and uh, Dustin Hoffman and yeah. Gene Hackman. So and uh, and Jeremy Piven, who I just ran into at the Soul Hosts Cigar Lounge. Doing comedy. I, I I just ran into him, like oh, literally. Did, We're talking about town? that. Minute. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll tell you in a minute. Okay. So so now, so there was a scene where. Uh, Dustin Hoffman's in the courtroom and he's deliberating to the to the jury. This yeah. is a, this is his his speech that gives that turns the whole trial. Right. So the, we were shooting one day and we was in New Orleans and it was raining like shit. Yeah. And the studio we were in had a tin roof. Yeah. So all you heard was the 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 the, the sound guy gave me his headphones. All you heard was and yeah. and and um and Dustin Hoffman was doing his lines and he kept messing up. Kept messing. I'm like, I felt bad for him because he's such a great actor. He kept messing up. And the director was getting frustrated. And everybody getting frustrated. And he kept messing up, messing up, messing up, messing up. <laughs> so then they said, suspended filming for the rest of the day. So the next day we came back and we're in our trailers. Yeah. And it was like 30 minutes passed by. We're like, what's going mm -hmm. on? They said, oh, Dustin's reshooting his sh scenes from yesterday. I said, oh, okay. So then I said, well, who's in the jury box then? Because we're talking to us. They said, nobody. Just a bunch of cameras. I said, well, let me go over there. So I went over there. And I was the only one sitting in the jury box. And I made eye contact with him the whole time he was doing his speech, the whole time he was doing his deliberation, his his uh, his his last speech, yeah. and and he was killing it. Not a, not a, not a flaw, not a flub line, nothing. Completely different from the day before. Right. And after after we got done shooting, he said, "Man, thank you, thank you for your energy. I needed that." But what it what it what it made me realize was the day that he was flubbing all the lines, mm. he was doing it on purpose. Because he didn't want to, you know, when you do a movie and you have sound issues, you got to go back and recreate that that sound in the oh. ADR and post. So he didn't want to do that. And he didn't want to do it. So he was messing up on purpose. This, you're talking about a veteran. You're talking oh, about damn. a veteran. You've been acting right. since the yeah. late, 60s. The yeah. early 60s. Since slavery. The graduate. So, <laughs> so, the graduate. So, so right. when, and my favorite movie he did was, uh, of course, one of my favorite comedy heroes, Lenny Bruce. Yeah, Lenny, Lenny Bruce. Oh, Lenny Lenny yeah. Bruce, he played him. Your, yeah, one yeah, of my favorite he stories. He played. He was in Steel with Papillon with Steve McQueen. Right. But that, right. that boy could do it. So I learned part. from Dustin that ah. man, when there's sound issues, man, he because I, I felt bad. Like, oh, he's old. He lost it. He didn't lose shit. Next day, he man, he went through that scene. Like, but it made me. If I had not seen Halle Berry do that and in introducing Dorothy yes. Daniels, I wouldn't have gone back and said, "Let me be there for you and give you your energy." That's and he thanked me for that. After She's that. cool as hell, isn't she? I mean, fine as. Man, I saw it without makeup. It's fine. Oh, Damn. Yeah. Fine as frog hair. You ever see frog hair? No. That's how fine she is. 80? Fuck 80. Dude, she's fine as frog hair, boy. <laughs> <laughs>